Personhood is a concept which has been traditionally applied and limited to belonging to humans. Humans have personhood. And it's been defined to a large extent on the basis of our sentience, our ability to feel emotions, um, our ability to anticipate and foresee either suffering or pleasure, and our, um, our value, our importance. And it's been limited to humans largely because of our religious and philosophical uh, belief system, which has formulated so much or formed and shaped so much of our thinking. However, when you look at the philosophical and legal definition of personhood, it is not limited to humans. And it really means that we need to explore in a very genuine way, what are the criteria we use to define personhood? And then that opens up the question as to are other beings also eligible to be labeled as persons? This is not a new chapter in animal rights. It's actually something that has been discussed and thought about for decades. It's gaining traction now in a way that it probably hasn't in the past. And I think it's opening doors to us challenging many of the very fundamental beliefs that we've carried with us without questioning them for so many generations. And I think that's where it's starting to gain a momentum that is exciting and potentially, hopefully, will open doors for us changing some of those ideas and some of our foundations for our comfort with exploiting non-human animals in the way that we have. The timing of the lawsuit for the non-human rights project and the four loss, uh, chimpanzees that are included in that lawsuit was not deliberately timed to come out at the same time as the politics of species. But Stephen Weiss wrote a chapter in the politics of species, was one of the participants at the round table in 2011. And he was part of that because his, of his very important work, his and his team. He has a very uh, strong team of people working with him. And their work has helped shape much of the thinking and has challenged many of the um, easy ideas that we have been able to carry with us over so many generations of feeling quite satisfied, quite comfortable, and quite relaxed in our sense of entitlement. I think we're, as I said earlier, I think we're coming to a point in time where we're gaining momentum with many of the ideas that are encapsulated in the politics of species. The ideas there aren't necessarily new. They've been uh, developed. They've been brewing for uh, several decades. But they're now gaining momentum. And there's a number of initiatives that have taken place over the, over the past year, two years, three years that are really showing how many people are starting to understand the importance of these questions that are being asked. One of those questions is obviously the legal rights of non-human animals, which is uh, taken on by Stephen Weiss and his team on the Non-Human Rights Project. Another area that has been really challenged and is being looked at very critically is the use of animals, sentient beings, in entertainment. And the exploitation of whether it be chimpanzees or orangutans or cetaceans like dolphins and orcas in um, marine facilities where they are taught to do tricks are really being challenged. Is this appropriate? Is this correct? And a recent film that came out in 2013, which will be up for the Oscars, Blackfish, is examining in a very balanced way the arguments pro and against the use of cetaceans in entertainment industry. Laurie Marino, who is a um, expert on the cognition of uh, cetaceans as well as on their um, sentience and um, much of their emotional uh, depth and, and um, richness, is also a contributor to the book, The Politics of Species. And she's also one of the people who is included in the film, Blackfish. And she speaks about the intelligence of orcas and their incredibly developed brains and the rich emotional centers that they have in their brains, far greater than that of humans. 
and challenges through that our uh, sense that we are entitled to using them for our entertainment, for cheap entertainment in marine parks.